heading for my run and into the rec center for some recovery after yesterday's long run. It was a doozy, uh, but just went into the post office and thank you, thank you for everyone who is still sending shoes. You're amazing. Uh, we have quite a collection now. I think we have at least a dozen running shoes to give away to people who truly, truly need them. That is what the running shoe giveaways are all about, is to help people get out the door with gently used running shoes on their feet. So anyway, we've got a collection, but now we can't live stream. So I don't know when the next live stream will be because of the copyright issue with Flow Sports. I've reached out to them three times, just so everybody knows, three times. And I know I have the right email because I followed instructions on YouTube as far as how to retract a copyright claim. Anyway, again, I, I guess it was the screen uh, being shown too much, so that's my bad, but it would just be nice to hear from them exactly why it was, uh, it, you know, they claimed a copyright on that Boston Marathon live stream in the studio. Anyway, bottom line, thank you for sending, but because of that, we cannot live stream and therefore I cannot do the run next running shoe giveaway. So hopefully it's sooner rather than later. I'll just keep key, I'll just keep you guys updated. So thanks for your patience there. Also, um, okay, we're gonna get to marathon training in a minute. I'm gonna update all of you on what is working and what is not working in marathon training. I will say this much as far as what is working. Recovery days in the gym. It is working so well with the pool and foam rolling and stretching and the stretching machines and all that good stuff. So anyway, we're gonna talk about that in detail back at the studio. And uh, did I already mention I went into the P.O. box and picked up a few more pairs today? Thank you again. Oh man, all right. Here we go. One, two, three. Just putting the finishing touches on the training as I hone in. We're getting close. Uh, just uh, remember, pencil, write the training log, the training schedule in a pencil so you can erase. And I just, I'm, I'm not erasing workouts, I'm moving workouts. I'm just like strategizing with uh, sharpening races and tune up races and uh, just listening, of course, to how the legs are feeling. And basically, all right. Let's get to the studio. I'm getting a little uh, a little ahead of myself, but let's get to the studio. I'll walk you through what I'm doing. Actually, first, let's open up a few boxes since we can't live stream tonight. I was gonna open some boxes. Okay, here we are. I think I know what is in here. Giveaway, what's it gonna be? Oh, man. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, it tricked me. It's a Nike box, but it's Brooks running shoes. These are the um, Levitate 2s, yes. The D, it has the DNA Amp midsole Brooks Levitate 2, and the Brooks Levitate 2s are from Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for this nice letter. I'll read it in full here in a little bit. Oh, you're the best, Matt. Oh, I'm just glancing at your letter, and I love it. You're amazing, and uh, these are just to help people, okay? These running shoes, at some point, as soon as we can get the live stream back going, we'll get them in the right hands to the right people. Okay, let's open up box number two. The studio, let's see. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa! Oh my goodness, okay. Shout out to Kurt. Thank you, Kurt, for sending this box. Oh my, I don't even know where to begin. We got more Brooks. Hello. Oh my, oh. <laughs> oh, it looks like something maybe for me. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, Kurt, you are the best. Kurt is an avid fan, a great just supporter, comments basically every single day. And Kurt, uh, I can't wait to meet you someday in person, but he is looking out for me. Look at this, the Morton drink mix for my marathon. I'm gonna test out, I've been testing out You Can T 
Tailwind, uh, just straight up Gatorade. And so this is the uh, the Morton drink mix. Oh, um, thank you, Kurt. I'm gonna put this to use probably tomorrow. Just continuing to test out. This is so cool. Oh, and look what else is in here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, my Broncos. Go Broncos. Kurt, are you a Broncos fan? <laughs> okay, let's open up one more box from Kurt. What's in here? Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Pegasus 35 Turbos. Oh man. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh my goodness. These are for a lady out there. Size six and a half. These things are so small, so cute, and I love them. Thank you, Kurt. S Pegasus 35 Turbos, size six and a half for a lady out there. Ladies, we're gonna take care of you next time we do a running shoe giveaway. They are brand spanking new. Look at those things. Oh my goodness. Kurt, you're the best. Okay, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. We'll do this next running shoe giveaway as soon as possible. See you in the studio. All right, marathon training update, here we go. By the way, do you guys have a t-shirt that you just love and you refuse to throw it away, but it has a lot of holes in it and you only wear it like once a year? This is my 14ers t-shirt with all the 14ers in Colorado, those big mountains in Colorado. We call them 14ers. Uh, basically, I wear this once a year because every time I put it on, a new hole pops up. Anyway, I, I love this shirt, I love All right, I just want everyone to know as we begin this marathon discussion, uh, first of all, keyword, sharpening. That's right. The sharpening has begun. It's it's now. Now is the time to begin. So I have 30 days to go. 3-0 days to go before Cleveland. It's incredible. It's so cool, nice, mentally, I would say rewarding to be kind of in that one month range before a peak race, especially after such a long training block leading up to this race. Uh, so that's exciting. And question of the day, I'm going to ask it now rather than at the end. What questions do you have for me about sharpening for a peak race? If you have a question, especially about the marathon, I'll definitely try and answer that because that's the mode I'm in right now. But if you're getting ready for a two mile state championship, I guess it's a little early for that, but soon enough, it will be time to, well, yeah, not too far off. The, the state track meets are gonna be happening all across the United States. So I'd be happy to try my best to give you insights down below in the comments. All right. I have not forgotten about the marathon playlist idea, but I've decided to create that playlist after Cleveland. So I want to get through the marathon, reevaluate everything in, you know, 30, 40 days from now. So just so you know, I have not forgotten about that where I will really break down this entire training block, which is, you know, has become very detailed, very uh, malleable. I've erased some things, added some things, listened to the body along the way. So I want to get through the entire training block before creating that marathon playlist. So it is coming. Stay tuned for that. And all right, moving on to injuries. So I wouldn't say I have any injuries, but I do have some aches and pains uh, in this marathon training block. Just want to update you there. It actually popped up. Uh, these aches and pains popped up basically right around the Cookie Chase 5K. That's why I took a down week last week, cut my volume by about 40%. And it's a little bit, it actually started in my big toe and that has, it's gone now and it's kind of moved, it's kind of moving up my leg I've noticed. So I've got a little bit of ache and pain, uh, soreness, tightness in my soleus area and I'm monitoring it very closely. Um, I, I'm not concerned, I'm really not concerned. It doesn't hurt at all when I'm running. It's more like after running, I just have to really be vigilant with the massaging, the stretching, the icing, the hydration, all of that stuff, the elevating elevating my legs up. Uh, so anyway, that's a little update as far as injuries go. Overall, I feel my legs feel tired and sore from the 22 miler yesterday, which is to be expected. Again, this is kind of my calculated risk time right now where I'm willing to take a little bit of a chance, push myself a little harder uh, in order to hopefully reap the benefits in, well, in four weeks from now. Today's run was, I didn't film much today, took it a little easier on the filming side, but it was 13 miles, so 21 kilometers, 730 a mile, uh, 440 per kilometer. So it's actually kind of nice mentally that a 13 mile, 730 a minute, for me, for me, I'm just, you know, 
it, it, fe it feels nice and relaxed. So that's a good sign. And with respect to my volume of training, and again, here is my calendar that I'm working with and keep continue to update every single, really every almost every single day, it seems like this at this point. Um, so I'm at about between 90. Remember how I like a range of mileage? So I'm between 90 and basically 105 miles per week. So about 155 kilometers per week in my training volume right now. Feel real good about that. I don't think it needs to be any higher and I don't think it needs to uh, go any lower yet. Although it, it is coming soon. In fact, I'll just say right now, uh, tapering begins in nine days. That's right. I like to taper 21 days out from a peak race, especially a big peak, like a, like a marathon, um, a 10 K 5 K it's less of a taper. It's it's, I should say shorter. Uh, it's not as long, but for a marathon after such a big, long buildup, I like to start tapering around. Well, I'll just shouldn't say around basically right at 21 days. So three weeks out from race day. And so with 30 days to go, what is left as far as harder efforts in this training block? One long run, two threshold runs, and two track workouts. So that's five harder efforts in the next 30 days. 30 divided by five is what? Six. So basically I'm gonna average about every six days a hard effort. Now, I will kind of load it heavy uh, right now in the next 10 to 15 days, because then the last week before the race, it'll definitely be easy, easy. So it's really going to be about every four to five days, a hard effort, um, faster efforts. That's where the sharpening comes in. That's where the track workouts come in. That's where the threshold track threshold efforts come in. And that's where the volume soon is going to start to come down pretty dramatically from 90 to 100 miles a week down to, um, let's see, I mean, well, I'll say it'll be like 70 to 80 and then it'll be about 45 to 50. And then the last week will be just baby, baby stuff. And so remember yesterday we talked about what we talked about mental confidence. So not necessarily mental toughness, but mental confidence going into a peak race. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Upper right hand corner. What gives me mental confidence? You've probably picked up on this already. It's not necessarily track workouts. It is long runs to a certain extent, but you know what it is. It's the threshold runs. That's right. That's why I'm kind of uh, loading up on these threshold runs about twice a month is what I've been averaging over the last really six to eight weeks. I'd have to, I'd have to double check about, yeah, six to eight weeks approximately. I've, so every two weeks I've been doing a, a good solid race pace threshold run here at Elevation, okay? Here at Elevation. So um, so the next one will be Monday, so in about five days from now. And uh, yeah, so that's what gives me confidence. And um, I bet you know what gives you confidence. For you, it might be, uh, it might be, you know, a ladder workout on the track that lasts for 35 minutes, but it's really, really intense. Um, so anyway, you just gotta find what not only works for you physically, but of course, what works for you mentally to give you that confidence going to the starting line. So in conclusion for my marathon training update, I don't feel rushed and I don't necessarily feel overextended either. Um, could I race in 10 days from now? I probably could. Honestly, I probably could. Would I be sharp, sharp? No, but I probably could go put out a really solid effort in 10 days from now. Um, so therefore I'm excited for the next 30 days. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited for the taper, the mental break, knowing like, okay, I can, instead of doing a 15 mile middle distance run, I can do a, an 11 mile middle distance run and eventually an eight and seven mile middle distance run. So, um, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I, I appreciate the encouragement and the support on Strava and here on YouTube. And hopefully that gives you a little insight as to what is about to play out for me in the next 30 days. And as you can see here, like May is not even really filled in yet. Like I know a, a couple things are filled in like the key workouts, but then again, it's going by feel listening to the body. Um, and like for, okay, one last point, I want to do one more high altitude effort. And I'm just trying to figure out, okay, when is that going to work? Meaning I want to go get one more above 13,000 feet inside of me, get those red blood cells one more time. Um, so anyway, like that's one detail that I haven't plugged in yet 
to late April and early May. All right, I love you guys. That is the vlog. I am gonna be publishing a second video today uh, all about answering your questions. Remember, I did not live stream last night because it's been shut down for now uh, because of the copyright issue. So 5 p.m. Mountain Time, I will be publishing the second video. Basically, it's gonna be a Q&A where I'm gonna answer a lot of your questions that are coming in via email, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. So. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Oh, I forgot to talk about the Skechers Razor 3, but that's all right. They did their job today. They did their job today. Woo! See you tomorrow.